Scott here with our trades is Scott Nations, president of Nations Indexes. And first up today, Scott, is the aforementioned Humana. What's your trade here? Uh, Tyler, this is the long-term buy, even though, as Bertha laid out, lots of problems in the Medicaid Advantage space. Uh, Humana is the worst performer in the S&P, down 14 percent. So why is it a long-term buy? Well, because the Medicaid Advantage program is generally a great business. And with a forward P.E. of just 18 for Humana, it's, it's fairly priced. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive. I'm not a big fan of technical analysis here, but for Humana, the relative strength index, the one technical indicator I really pay attention to says it's screamingly oversold here. Up next, D.R. Horton, Wedbush downgrading five home builders, including D.R. Horton, to underperform from neutral, saying a seasonal stock decline into summer is likely. We we're just talking about this with Diana. Shares are down about more than 3% today, so off its low. Scott, what is your trade on D.R. Horton? Uh, D.R. Horton is a buy, but brace yourself, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Because the home builders have done a wonderful job of managing higher interest rates, D.R. Horton is higher over one month and one year time periods. Forward P.E. of just 11 means it is a bargain. Uh, but EPS growth is not going to be enough because with a beta of 1.6, D.R. Horton is just about half again as volatile as the overall, overall market. So, again, forward P.E. of 11 means it's a bargain. But with that beta, it means hold on to your hat. All right, let's move on to the stock that uh, everyone used to love, but now everyone likes to uh, whoop on. That's Tesla. Shares of the EV maker under pressure after reporting deliveries have dropped for eight and eight and a half percent uh, from a year ago. Your trade, sir, on Tesla. Uh, Tesla is a hold to a sell, as you can see there, down five and a half percent on that news. The problem is that the deliveries being down eight and a half percent was worse than was expected. It's the first year-over-year -year decline for the company in deliveries since 2020. And I think, Tether, your point, I think investors are finally getting over the crush that they had on Elon. <laughs> they realize the company has to produce. And with a forward P.E. of 55, Tesla has to grow just for the share price to stay in place. And it just fell out of the 10 biggest names in the S&P 500. It's now behind both J.P. Morgan and Visa. And so it's tough to see how the bleeding is going to stop for Tesla. Scott, finally, last word from you on what we're seeing in the markets today. It feels like there's worries growing about how many rate cuts may or may not be on the table this year. But could you make the argument that a healthy economy is better for stocks than looser policy? We started the day with a big increase in the 10-year rate. We had a big increase in the 10-year rate yesterday. So some ugliness in as far as stock prices isn't to be uh, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. My takeaway is this. With the unemployment rate below 5% and inflation at nearly 3% or above 3%, why in the world would we expect the Federal Reserve to be cutting rates in June? 